Welcome to another episode of our Sunday World Engage a platform where we engage South Africans uh, of uh, interest and our person of interest today. Another other than Houting Premier, by now than Suki, the Chief President of the EU, Philip the uh, Premier. Thank you so much, man. Are you well? I'm good. Um, it's fine. Are you happy with swallows and how they're doing? I'm um, to see you're wearing a red tie, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited that at least uh, you, you noted the importance of that color in my life. Thanks. <laughs> so, Premier, you, you are finishing a year uh, in the position that yeah. you're going as Premier on the 22nd of October. If you were to rate yourself in that year, I know a year not enough in politics to do much, but if you were to rate yourself uh, in brief, how much we can give yourself out of 10 and why? Well, it's still massive work in progress, uh, to be quite frank. Uh, and I'm one person that uh, leaves the ratings to those that analyzes our work uh, to make that decision. I don't want to influence them one way or another. I, but I'm the view that uh, we made a huge dent. Uh, we've managed to uh, to hold uh, some of the things that were a free fall uh, for, for, for our movement and also for government. Uh, for example, the, the issue of job creation became a massive, massive uh, headache for the movement. And we managed to make some investment there. And the results are there. Young people are excited about the opportunities that they've created. They might not be enough, but at least they know they can apply. They know they can look forward to an advertisement. They know they look forward to an appointment later, something that was not there a year ago. Uh, secondly, is the issue of crime. Uh, we've made a huge, huge dent there. Uh, if you check the statistics that are released by the Minister of Police, uh, how it looks like also uh, the number of people that are killed, kidnapped, the number of women that are raped and children that are killed, is, it's a sorry sight. So within a year, we introduced uh, something that now familiar in our township called police wardens. Uh, they are there in their presence, 6,000 of them, uh, trying to push back crime in our communities. We have equipped them with the necessary tools, including vehicles. We also brought uh, two new helicopters that were not there. We are putting a process of putting an e panic button. Uh, we've installed uh, CCTV cameras strategic in some of the township. We're targeting to put almost 8,000 of them across the entire province. The third area was the issue of energy. Uh, we've managed to establish an energy crisis um, team that is working on diversity. Uh, the matters related to Load shedding, uh, we're we working hard now from next week to release transformers to communities uh, that don't have transformers and areas where the mini stations either were stolen or vandalized, where the summit uh, with all stakeholders, community organization, ESCOM, have now put an eight point plan on how we want to eradicate load shedding in Gauteng by January next year. So the year was tough, difficult, but uh, we have to do planning and implementation at the same time. And we're quite excited about the work that we're doing. On the issue of the crime wardens, uh, Premier, the, the whole um, controversy around legislating that particular structure, uh, what, what is the plan there? What are you doing about it? Well, before we, we, we I mean, and it's natural, and sometimes uh, it is... It, it's something that uh, surprises me. Before you establish something of this nature, naturally it dictates that you must consult, check legal views, check everyone, and, 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 and present the ideas that we, you have. And we did that, and we presented that. We're given the green light uh, by legal authorities. We're given the green light by those that are in law enforcement agencies. Uh, and are therefore, any argument that uh, the establishment of our peace wardens is not uh, legal, uh, that argument is baseless. Mm -hmm. Load shedding. Uh, you've been big about load shedding. Yeah. I mean, recently you heard the NHG in Daba that was attended yeah. by all affected stakeholders. And among the things that you said there was the push to have all uh, is in your uh, illegal connections, uh, you know, disconnected and connected properly by the end of this year. Is that feasible looking at where we are? At how big is that problem, by the way? Mwanda, let me be honest with you. Uh, and unfortunately, I'll wear the political cap of the party that has changed the province. If we can't deal with Lord Shady by the end of this year, that's the end of the African National Congress, both in the province and national. Um, Lord shedding is disruptive, irritating, and is uh, contributing to a huge uh, cost of living 
uh, headaches that our people are going through. We can't have our people throwing food that uh, it's, it's, it's rotten. We can't have our people living through takeaways. We can't have our people bathing their children with cold water in the morning. It's an irritation. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, it's just that unfortunately that provincial government does not have a legislative mandate to deal with load shedding. Uh, it's national government and, uh, and local government. But you can't throw our hands in the air and say, there's nothing that I can do. Uh, we've convened uh, an energy summit. We agreed on eight powerful points. Uh, the first point, which is very key to us, uh, is to remove illegal connection. Because even if we can solve the issue of load shedding, if we can account for all the electricity we have, we're not going to defeat load shedding. And the people that are taking this illegal electricity, Amazamas and people that we don't know where they stay, where they come from. So we must be very, very firm uh, in removing illegal connections. Uh, and we've given ourselves between now and December to do that. Uh, the team has already started. We've seen in Johannesburg, in uh, Alexander, uh, people have been removed. Uh, Swane did that. Johannesburg is also doing that. And Ekumbin is doing that. And including, uh, which which shocks me uh, when uh, uh, because I didn't understand even state institutions like telco can owe electricity or not pay for for electricity. So that's the first part. And then the second part is to install prepaid metering system so that whoever consume must pay for what they're consuming. Yeah. So we're converting the entire housing into smart metering system. And there's new smart meters will also assist us because in fighting load shedding, you can't tell people, switch off your geyser, switch off your swimming uh, pump and other, and people ignore you. So we are putting the smart meters that will allow us remotely to control your electricity in your house so that we can leave you with your television, your stove, your lights, uh, but those things that consume more electricity, we can automatically and remotely switch them off when we've got uh, a, a pressure. Thirdly, is for us to then resolve infrastructure challenges. Even with, with, without load shedding, there are people that have not had electricity for three to four years. Uh, and that angers me, to be quite frank. Uh, it angers me because if you want to intervene now, as we've just been given this authority to run government, if you want to intervene now, even out of love, people will doubt whether indeed genuinely you want to solve this problem or it's because your eye is on the 2024 elections. Uh, uh, and I've said to the team, and they will tell you, I meet with them every morning uh, to say that we must give those people that have their transformers blown or the transformers that are overloaded. If something is overloaded, get a bigger thing so that it must not be overloaded. You can't say they don't have electricity because their transformer is overloaded. So we are working on all these eight points, uh, including debt management, which is very key. You know, we can't say escrow. Your debt is going to be removed by government. And government is taking that decision to uh, remove the debt of ESCOM. But ESCOM does not want to remove the debt of the people that owe it. I mean, where is fairness? We remove your debt, but you don't want to remove the debt of people that owe you. Uh, so at least now, uh, all our municipalities in Khaudeng have got a major reprieve. Uh, ESCOM has removed their debts. Uh, 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 we are working on Johannesburg and Swane, but all other small municipalities that debt have been removed. But I'm propagating for something that is very, very new uh, uh, to, to the Minister of, of, of Corporate Governance. You can have institutions that are managed by the same government resolving their debts through courts. Uh, uh, if if, if rent water is owed, the instead of going to the Minister of Corporate Governance to say, the money you are giving to M. Fulian Municipality, they owe me, here's proof, they owe me this amount, give me that amount. You go to court, you get lawyers. You get the, uh, I mean, M. Fulian, their, their, their bank account is attached. Uh, workers can't get, and it's government owing each other. So why can't you introduce a new agency to manage debt amongst ourselves? If a certain municipality owes ESCOM, find an internal way. ESCOM is a government institution. Why should we go to court to resolve such a problem? So we are arguing very strongly that there must be a new agency within government that is a debt management agency. For example, if the provincial government owes Ekuruleni 
an amount of money. We must find a way of resolving that matter rather than going to court and having our assets attached and many other related matters. So those resolutions we really believe will assist us to manage load sharing. But I'm committing myself within the limitations that we have. We will try as holding to ensure that we minimize load shedding. I've already signed, as I said, we don't have power as a provincial government. I've signed an agency agreement with City Power in Johannesburg because they have the license to, to build new power stations. They've got the license to distribute power and they have the license to, 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 uh, to sell power. So what we've done, the provincial government have signed an agreement with uh, City Power. So City Power now is doing the work that are doing at City Power on behalf of the entire province in Gauteng. We are buying new transformers. We don't have a mandate to do that. Now we are buying them through City Power. We are building new power stations. We've got 85 companies that have given us their bids to say that they can create new electricity stations in Gauteng. So we are going through the evaluation of those bids. We hopefully, as I said, by December, will make a major dent about load shading in our province. Are you not overloading city power? Some would say already it was struggling to deal with power problems in within the city of Chobe, and now you want to expand their reach to the entire province. Uh, that argument is, 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 is justified. Uh, and that is why I said to city power, expand your capacity, we will fund you. So it's not only using the current capacity. They have to expand their capacity for, that, for them to carry the mandate. And the expansion of that particular capacity, as the provincial government, we are willing uh, to put uh, resources there. Oh, smart, uh, smart prepaid metering, how would you deal with resistance in that regard? I'll make an example. It has been tried in Soweto in particular before, and there was a serious pushback such that government moved back and, and let them continue in the current regime. How are you going to fight with the expected resistance as it relates to prepare and smart metering, especially the one that will be controlled to watch. Through consultation. Uh, you will see the provincial government will be running lots of advertisement uh, next week. We're doing what you call transformer handover. We bring the transformer and we tell people, for you to get electricity, there must be no illegal connection. For you to get this electricity, you must convert to smart metering. For you to get electricity, you must protect this transformer. So we are going on a huge roadshow across all our townships in our provinces. So those that don't want smart meters, unfortunately, they will have to pay the price of being in darkness. Uh, because in the absence of smart meters, we can account for electricity. And I'm hopeful uh, that the roadshows, the consultation, the persuasion that we're going to have will yield necessary dividends. Uh, Tembisa is the first township to go and prepare it. I was a young person, I was an activist at that time, uh, that I persuaded people of Tembisa to go on, 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 on prepaid. And you check the township that pays for services higher than any other township in Gaudi. It's Tembisa. Purely because as a leader, if you are capable to listen, persuade, and advance your argument, people will be in a position to buy that argument. But we 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 at this electricity summit, and at that particular summit, almost everyone unanimously agreed that we must go prepaid uh, smart metering uh, uh, route for us to deal with the issue of load shed. To be education is one of the big issues for the province, yep. uh, purely because mostly because of the influx from Indeed. the outskirts provinces. Um, in your view, why have we struggled at the level of the metric results to dethrone free state in the Western Cape? And what should be done? for us to reach the level where we are in leading province uh, in metric results. I don't want to undervalue the role of free state, uh, but it's a number game. Uh, for example, we, we, we have almost 100,000 matriculates. And then it's the, uh, uh, free state has how many students? 15,000. So, so who get the highest uh, uh, Bachelor passes, how they? Who get the highest distinctions, how they? Who get the best districts performing better, how they? Uh, but the calculation, obviously, and it's something that uh, I don't want to uh, denounce because I'm not number one. Uh, uh, the calculation, the way they calculate percentage, uh, it favors free state and let's support it. So, so, so we're doing very well. We might not be number one, per se, in terms of how uh, these numbers are calculated. 
But we have 55,000 learners that wrote metric last year in Gauti, getting bachelor passes. Ah, my good brother. Uh, that's an achievement that uh, only those that don't appreciate the work of government will not upload. And the whole issue of specialized schools. That's the future, Mount. That's okay. the future. Uh, if we can't have schools specializing on a certain economic node, that's the end of all of us. Uh, we can't all of us do same subject, same thing. When we have a shortage of maths teacher, all of us have shortages of maths teacher. And I'm glad that the School of Specialization has been openly and warmly welcomed by the private sector. Uh, we have a, 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 a School of Specialization on the motor industry. BMW came on board. We have got the School of uh, Aviation. Uh, unfortunately, SAA went through their own challenges. SAA tapped in. We've got a, a, a School of, special, uh, of Specialization. In, in, in finance, you've got all these financial institutions coming. So thus far, we've got 35 schools of specialization. I'm of the view uh, of the 600 odd high schools that we have in Gaudi, all of them are specialized on a certain talent. Uh, I mean, you check universities, how many first day students that want to do medication that can't be taken? Uh, and we have people that want to be doctors that can't be taken. So they must take end up taking other courses purely because their first choice can be accommodated because universities are not expanding. So my argument is uh, universities must expand. Universities must know that the numbers have increased. You can't have vets the way it is for life. It must expand so that it can accommodate new numbers. So as much as we want to specialize, I really believe higher education institutions must also specialize. I mean, I was hit by by reality, when we introduce uh, paperless classrooms where we remove the chalk in the class, uh, every learner was given a tablet. And we said to uh, VETS and UJ, all those universities that are in Gauti, you can't teach future teachers on how to write on a chalk because there will be no chalk in Gauti. And they said to me, ah, MEC, at that time as the MEC, MEC, we are not teaching teachers for Gauti only. We are teaching teachers for South Africa. So, so. We need to coordinate our efforts if we have to change uh, the skills uh, base of our country. Mm. And public health care, one of the problem areas, so to speak, I mean, mm. rampant corruption within that sector, yeah. there been all sorts of controversies in the past, since COVID, even post-COVID, issues of Tepisa Hospital. How are you dealing with the problems in that particular uh, space? Well, let me start with Tepisa Hospital. I, I was, I think, three weeks in office, and I felt... Uh, the issue of Tempis Hospital, it's something that is embarrassing. Here is somebody uh, who has identified corruption, and we are dilatory. Uh, I, I wrote to the president, say, President, here's a report. On the base of this report, we need you to proclaim that there must be investigation. Unfortunately, those things take long. It's only three weeks ago uh, that the president proclaimed uh, uh, the investigation in Tempis Hospital. So the SIU is working on it. I'm relieved that at least that part is done. Uh, 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 we, we, we can learn. We have to change the way we handle hospitals. Uh, uh, Mawanda, I wish I could give you this scoop, but uh, let me not do You're welcome. Uh, let me not do it. In the next few weeks, we're announcing how we're changing the health landscape of our program. The, the way we are, we are not going to match the demand unless we do something outside the box extraordinarily. Uh, and we are at an advanced stage. That's what I'm saying the next three weeks or so. We are at an advanced stage. Uh, we, we, we can't allow our hospital to deteriorate the way they are deteriorating, overburdened, and go through the difficulties that they're going. And if you think you're going to build one hospital today, another hospital next year, when the numbers are so huge, uh, we are not going to succeed. So we're going to introduce something that is groundbreaking in Gauti. Uh, 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 young people, but the mic drop or drop a mic or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we're going to, 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 to introduce something that uh, will surprise even our enemies on how we're going to take health and how to into the next level. So just give me the next few weeks. We are fine-tuning it. It is, is an advanced stage, but uh, it's going to be a jaw-dropping announcement. Can you give us two? Is that a high number? 
It's going to be a jaw-dropping uh, announcement. Uh, going to drop your mic, can it? Yeah. Yes, from God. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. Do, do you believe that there's coordination between the provincial government and, and um, the municipalities within the province? And I say this on the backdrop of, you know, a couple of disasters that we've had, uh, fires, collapsing roads and, and stuff like that. There's been a whole talk about uh, apparent lack of coordination between the provincial government and these municipalities. What is your view? To be quite frank with you, except uh, a municipality called Midval, uh, we've got 11 municipalities in Gauti. Of the 11 municipalities, nine have completely collapsed. Completely. I mean, whoever thought that uh, a municipality like Swani can go to court to plead poverty that it can't pay with that? That on its own is an indication uh, of a municipality that have collapsed. Whoever thought that will have municipalities that their bank accounts can be attached. Uh, whoever thought that they have municipalities that can even have a single HNA. So what we are seeing in terms of uh, exploding, explosion in our streets, burning or fire in our, it, it is, an, is an affirmation that we need to radically overhaul. Uh, uh, the municipalities uh, that we have, uh, and and this is purely the political dynamics that have uh, taken over uh, in our municipalities. Uh, we we just need to find a way and mechanism uh, of of resolving that. But I'm 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 of the view uh, that uh, ninety five percent of our municipalities have collapsed. Can I hear? Isn't that sabotaging them? What the provincial government is trying to do because the reality is that at service delivery happens in municipalities and if you say out of 11, 9 have collapsed, that is a very dire situation. It is. It is. Uh, it, it's just that and I, I don't want to <laughs> to sound uh, uh, maybe let me leave that point. I, I, I really feel that we are not accepting uh, that this form of running local government called coalition, unless it's appropriately legislated and appropriately regulated, is going to be the end of municipalities. Um, the problem is that you say this because either the ANC or another party is not in charge and therefore you feel uh, that's the reason why you feel that this thing needs to be legislated. Lo local government has collapsed because of the nature of coalition discussions. I've been at the center of the negotiations of those coalitions. Uh, it's not working. It's not uh, unless something is regulated. It's it, it's really uh, creating problems. I mean, I'll give you an example. You got a a by-election, or you've got a motion of no confidence. Those two activities collapses any relationship. Those two. A vote of no confidence. Because when you have a vote of no confidence, another party comes to you and say, I need X, Y, Z. Close your eyes, close your ears. If you don't give me this, I'm going there. What do you do? You have to protect what you need to protect. You go to by-election, we are contesting the same word together. The other one say, buy me posters. Uh, I mean, how do I buy you posters and promotional material when we are contesting the same word? I mean, so so it, it's a very delicate balance that you need to endure, but you can't enjoy it if there's no legislation that manages it, you know? And, uh, for example, uh, we, are, we are of the strong view for stability sake, instead of having endless motion of no confidence, have two motions of no confidence in a year. At least there's stability, you know? Uh, 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 regulate uh, if a political party has reached the highest number, uh, that political party can't be excluded because if you exclude that party, then there'll be instability because you've got the highest numbers. Uh, so things like that. But if you don't, the price that you are paying because of collapse in municipalities is too heavy. We can't carry it forever. And we are hardly two years of the five-year period of this municipality. Oh. 
Maybe just to transition to 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 other things uh, to do with your government part in the ANC. There's a whole lot of talks about the future and what our future should look like. And among that talk, there's been talks uh, that probably your name may be called one day for for the big one at being of the president of the country. Would you eat such a call? Not yet. I'm not ready. I'm still young. I need to learn. Uh, I, I don't think I am. Um, and then there's a full generation before me uh, that must also uh, be given that responsibility. But, um, we are young and we are leading a young province called Gauteng. I think uh, let's spend time and focus our energy in ensuring that Gauteng becomes what all of us wanted Gauteng to be. A province that creates jobs, a province that is safe, reliable energy, a province that makes young people to go and entertain themselves without fear of being robbed, fear of being hijacked and attacked. Uh, my energy, to be quite frank, uh, is focused on 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 how they. And I've played my part. If voters or branches of the ANC feel I need to continue my responsibilities uh, in how they, uh, I'm more than willing to do so. Uh, any other responsibility outside how they bigger. Uh, I don't think that uh, uh, I'm ready for that or I would open my mind to it. Would you be ready by 2032? I'm not sure. I think by 20... I mean, I've been... I've joined politics when I was 14 years. Uh, I'm now in my 50s. Uh, and I know nothing outside politics. So, so, so if you speak about 2032 and all other things... I think by that time, I should be uh, in the grandstand shouting, Swallows must win, and uh, not uh, uh, concentrating on those things. Only, honestly, I don't think that, uh, I think my political work in Gauteng is preoccupying me. If we can salvage, defend, and protect Gauteng, um, I'll be the happiest person. Uh, any other mandate beyond that, uh, I don't think I'm ready for it now. Oh, and do you think that the ANC can... Retain outright maturity in county. Definitely. There's a whole talk Definitely. that it's, it's, it's impossible. Definitely. No, we will. We, we, uh, I've no doubt about that. But I must confess, it's not going to be easy. Uh, we have to work extraordinary hard. Uh, something that I'm giving myself to. Uh, uh, and I know that many people that are paying that price, uh, my family, my hobby, my fitness, you can see, I'm spending more time on ensuring that we protect Houthi. Uh, uh, and, and you can see the political parties are feeling our presence. Uh, for the EFF to even think that uh, they need to move uh, 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 Dr. Androsi from national parliament to here is an indirect affirmation uh, that Houthi is not what we thought it would be. Uh, it's not going to be up for easy taking um, and, and, and uh, for for. For the Moon Pact as well to be launched in Gauteng uh, is an affirmation that they are quite aware that they needed something that can uh, tilt uh, voters in Gauteng. But we, 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 we are preparing Gauteng without coalition and we're not ashamed about that. Uh, and we are prepared, if we can't make that task, we are prepared to occupy the opposition benches. Uh, the coalition discussions are going to destroy the future of our country and the future of our province. I've seen it with local government. And I'm not prepared to gamble with it with provincial government. So we just have to go on an outright, outright win uh, of holding in the ANC. Uh, anything below that will be serious underperformance. But we have to be ready to work extraordinary hard. Well, we have made meaningful progress in infrastructure development. For example, we, we're building a school every month in Gauteng. What did they do? They stopped giving us authorization to build schools. Uh, where we have built schools, they stopped us occupying because the occupation certificate must come from local government. We have built almost 17 new clinics. They failed to give us occupation certificate. The president came into our in, 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 in power, and what did the president say? I'm developing a new city called Lanceria. What did they do? They refused to connect that city with water electricity. So the DA was sabotaging everything that we needed to do. And I said to them, you have a choice of what we are putting as an alternative coalition or allowing 
this destruction by the DA to take place. And all of us agreed, go and work and have an alternative because the DA was honestly a, 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 a stalling development and growth of our province. Uh, and on the basis of that, we, we managed to. The only masterpiece, obviously, uh, and, 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 and that was a fear of those that are in the ANC, was that do you want to be the first province to give power to the EFF in terms of a municipality being mayor? And we felt it was genuine concern. And that is why we went on the balance scale to say, no, you, EFF, and ourselves are prepared to compromise. We'll not be mayors. Uh, we'll rather have small parties to be mayors. But what did you say about no, this is a temporary arrangement. It don't be there. It don't last. It's not. It's lasting. It's here. It's available. And all of us have screaming headline. Uh, we are holding umbrella for political parties. Uh, but that, that, that formula is the one that I said. It took time to motivate, uh, to panel beat, and to sell it for it to be acceptable. I mean, to go and tell the EFF that we want to work with you, but you're not going to be a mayor. It was not easy because their option was there. Take Houting, uh, take Johannesburg, we take a good lane. Uh, and then we give, uh, uh, um, at that time, they were very close to Mashaba. You give Mashaba uh, 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 Tswani. And we said, no, no, no. We want presence in all these municipalities because we wanted to stop this. I mean, now we've got schools that have been built. Now we've got schools that have occupation certificate, clinics that have occupation certificate. Lanceria, a city is rising, waterfall is beautiful, is rising. So it was just a tactical uh, a, a advancement, and I think it has paid the necessary dividends. But you can be, which is something that uh, I must be honest, that needs uh, coalition partners uh, to balance. Yes, we are not in the same political space, but you can't be in coalition with me and have to agree of the FA, EFF insulting or have uh, the PA insulting Dada Morero in, 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 or have uh, EFF at the rally uh, to say uh, they are going to fire all police wardens when, they, when we are <laughs> jointly managing things. So it's some of the areas that still need to be penal beated, but so far at least we've got governance that is stable in our province and that is going to be very well. In fact, I was asked that how do you manage to work with the, how do you uh, navigate around the contradictions, as you said, because after all, as you said earlier, about, they themselves are out to get you out of power, so they will have to still do their position job, which is to criticize what you're doing. How do you balance this? the maturity of the ANC? Yeah. The maturity of the ANC. The maturity of the ANC have carried all these coalition governments in the province. If the ANC was not matured, all these things would have collapsed. And what is maturity? Maturity is identify the minimum program of action that we agree upon. A minimum program of action that all the parties can agree upon. At least if the minimum is covered. Other things, they are political parties. They like insulting, they like playing to the gallery and all these particular things. So you just take the body patches as long as the basics are there and then we can be in a position to service our people. Because we know the price of not servicing our people. Uh, we know the price of having townships that are dead. I mean, go to Ekurulele. There's no single sporting event in the township uh, that is uh, still survive, the, 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 that is still standing. The DA destroyed all sporting facilities in the townships. Me and you was a stadium called Makulong in Tembisa. Go there. Destroyed. There was a stadium called Kadleho. Destroyed. First Laura Stadium. Destroyed. So, developments in the township took a punishment uh, out of the DA rule. So, if we have political parties that wants to play to the gallery and insult you, it's fine. Take the punishment. Take the insult. Absorb those insults. As long water is flowing in the houses of our people, as long debt has been collected, sewer has been collected, uh, 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 can flow, and people can uh, be safe in our communities through public safety. So, is the bare minimum program that we share that makes these things to, to happen. But we are taking body punches literally every day. I mean, you are insulted every day, but um, you, you, you just say, there's the price I'm prepared to pay for prosperity of our municipalities in our province.
But those both qualities we are also taking them from within. Because, for instance, you talk about how you sold the idea initially, and there was acceptance that you must move ahead in this approach. But to this day, it's it's it's, it's become awful that you hear leaders uh, from national to the house speaking against uh, this particular arrangement that we have with the EFF. How do you then take the patches from within? Because that's like internal sabotage. It's a painful part. The internal punches are very painful. But you take them, you know, you take them, you go to the gym, pick up two strength <laughs> so that you can be ready for the next punch. You can't be a boxer and not ready to take a punch. You can't hunt honey and not ready to be stuck by a bee. It does not work that way. So even when we are hunting for that honey, the bee will stuck us. And in the process, will pay the price uh, of, of, of being stung by a bee. It's, 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 a, it's a delicate balance. The only consolation is that our people are getting safest. Uh, you can play a political ticket to say, I don't want PA. Uh, I mean, the PA told the, we're in coalition. <laughs> they tell the councillor that is the council of the ANC, resign tomorrow. Uh, and the councillor resigned, and the councillor that resigned from the ANC go and contest a vote uh, against the ANC. We're in coalition together. Why would we do that? But that's the price you pay for this coalition. That's the price you pay. So even the leadership of the ANC, I mean, mm -hmm. I saw last week you were saying that pull out of uh, this coalition. I said, no, no, no. Convene us, all of us. It must not just be a... Uh, 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 like a water tap, when you want to turn it on, you turn it on. When you want to turn it off, you turn it off. It does not work that way. Uh, you need to bring everyone, provincial leadership, national leadership. Let's discuss, evaluate, because a decision about Gauti does not, no longer affect Gauti only. It can affect Etegwini. Uh, 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 it can affect Nelson Mandela. Uh, so, so take those decisions take into consideration that they may affect other municipalities. And I'm glad that uh, the SG uh, of the ANC uh, has convened that session. We already have one session. There's a follow-up of session of all the provinces together with national with the National Executive Committee of the ANC, where we are evaluating this coalition literally uh, a quarterly so that we can say, are we still on the right track? Which is something that was missing. Uh, because we are only convened when they see a certain statement or somebody insult a certain leader. They say, no, 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 let's convene, let's pull out of this thing. But if you have quarterly review, whether we're still on track, we're benefiting out of these things, I think it will assist us to strengthen and stabilize this coalition. So yeah. you are very critical of the DA and how they abandoned uh, these coalitions running their own affairs, sabotaging the provincial government. Would you work with the DA after next year, say, you are unable to get 50 plus 1 at the provincial level. Well, I'm bound by the decision of the National Executive Committee of the ANC that will work with whoever that wants to work with the ANC. But those that don't want to work with the ANC will not work with them. And I'm not going to beg them. I think there are political parties that have uh, openly said that they're not going to work with the ANC. So why should we go and beg them to work with us when they've pronounced out that they don't want to work with us? Those that don't want to work with us, it's fine. And those that are willing to work with us, it's also fine. Oh, would it be any low to work with the TA? Against the backdrop of all uh, these uh, failures that they've and atrocities they've committed at the uh, municipal level. Well, the political parties at the personal level, uh, I, I would not even entertain to work with. But I don't want to mention names because I'm not. It's not about personal things, but uh, but the parties that are prepared to work with us will work with them. Uh, but my advice to the ANC, even those parties that are prepared to work with us, there must be some bare minimum agreement that must be entered into. It can't just be blindly because we want to be in power. Whoever wants to work with us, uh, come, come, let's form government. Uh, I don't know. But there are political parties that uh, I will die for. Uh, 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 and, and, and one such political party is Al Jama. You know, Al Jama. Uh, and, and that's the reason we even gave them the mayorship of uh, Johannesburg when people were uh, raising the concern that year. When we lost power in Johannesburg, all political parties that were in coalition with them, the IFP, 
PAA, uh, they left because they wanted to form government with 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 the new regime, the DA. Al Jama remained with us. Remained with us. When we they when the power the parties that went to the DA found out that the DA is racist, is white, is do all this. When they came back, Al Jama didn't say you have you find out you have you have, you have, you have, you went you are you are finding us back here we are the superpower no 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 they behave normally they didn't want many it's us that said suggested them that they should lead the municipality so such parties are parties that are consistent principled and always there with you they are not with you during shiny days and leave you when there are parties that I know uh, when the ANC cannot be in power they will be the first one to teach us out. So should I go and beg those parties? No. So the political parties that I can work with and the political parties, obviously, ideologically and otherwise, I, I can't work with them. And historically as well. Oh. What What is your view on Bogani Baroya's Shiluwan political party? Good luck to him. Would you work with it? Well, if he wants to work with us, we'll work with him. But if he doesn't want to work with us... Uh, what surprises me, there are some parties that make pro public pronouncement that they don't want to work with us, but they send delegations to come and talk to us. Um, so, so, I mean, Bongani is highly talented. Uh, he ran the mid very well. Uh, he's open-minded, uh, have a bright future. So, so, my first prize to him is for him to abandon the uh, 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 organization and come and join the ANC. Why? Because we need his expertise, his talent, his commitment. You know, it's rare nowadays to find a politician that is administratively astute and politically clear. Uh, that balance is very important. You understand administration, but at the same time, you understand politics. And Bongani is uh, one of the few in that category. So uh, we have persuaded him. team. We will continue to persuade him to to join the ANC, and I'm glad that somebody who we've persuaded in Johannesburg uh, is warming up uh, as well. So there are many other leaders that we will persuade to join the ANC. Finally, finally, Premier, uh, among other things that uh, obviously uh, will work in your favor in retaining the province as the ANC in this province is how people view your national government because, I mean, in South Africa, yeah. it's actually very difficult for people to separate so these true. three layers yeah. of, of government. And there's a huge critique on, on, on the national government, which is led by the ANC. People are saying it's failing in every fan, fraud, jobs, low shady. I can go on and on. Yeah. Do you believe that the national leadership of the ANC on of the country as it is now has the capabilities to make a difference between now and the expectations? What's the alternative? EFF and Freedom Party in, par in Parliament running this government. What will be the price of that? The alternative is severe and dire. Uh, and it's, it's very important, and therefore we need to consolidate and find. I mean, that is why we are saying review us from 1994. The 29, 2019 manifesto review, it serves that purpose. Those that didn't have water have water. Those that didn't have houses have houses. Those that didn't have clinics have clinics. It might not be all of them, but there's tangible proof that this government has delivered where it needed to deliver. There is tangible proof that we are Mawanda will not be seated in this room if 1994 didn't happen. That will not be a political edit of an institution of this magnitude if we didn't promote uh, 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 empowerment of black people. That will not be in a position to have women occupying strategic positions in our country. The limitation of our government is its failure to package its achievement and its communication machinery. That is major limitations. The general view of load shedding and the general view on inflation, when those views were not there, when we didn't have load shedding, were people ready to vote for the ANC? They're not even voting for us. You know, it's just that we have a new item that contributes to a perception that this government has failed. But this government has its own limitation, but also accept this government has scored spectacular good work where it needs to. The limitations cannot therefore erode what we've done. And I'm sharing that view 
that indeed there are areas that we needed to have improved. But check where we come from. So many people that are protected by the rights that we have defended and protected, even if those rights are against us, including your press freedom. I mean, the media has the right to criticize us because we've given them the right to do so. It's not something that we can take for granted when people were not even allowed to have some of the media houses that we have. Before 1994, there was no IFM, there was no Power FM, there was no Kaya FM. Those institutions were not there. Before 1994, did you have MTN? Did you have Vodacom? Do you have uh, 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 the institutions that we're having now and the many malls and money institutions that through our policies have created all these uh, facilities to be available? I'm saying judge us on the basis of what we are capable of doing, not on the short-term limitations that we have. We have put this country completely out of a quagmire. Yes, there are signs that if we can't intervene decisively, we can go back to that quagmire. And the reason some of us are here is to ensure that we don't go back to that quagmire. Premier and Provost uh, Chair, President of the ANC, Mr. Bajaj, so thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, that was another episode of Sunny World Engage. Uh, until next time, when we reveal our next person of interest. Oi. Oi. <laughs> 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 <laughs>